that I talk to your people about. Somewhere in just the hallways, God stepped in and said, Tell my people, get ready for your move. Get ready for the new. Now, it's not even part of the message, but if, when, when I think about being ready for the new, I tell for you to clean out your closet. Closet is packed with stuff. You have no room to expand for new. Probably 30% of the stuff that's in most of our closets, you don't wear anyway. You might need to go bless somebody else with that good stuff that you don't wear because you're not going at you, whether physically or mentally, you just don't like it anymore. But sometimes we hold on to things because, you know, well, I bought that, I paid for that, well, you know, this is good stuff. It might be good, and thank God it is good, but you know what? You need to get rid of that to get ready for the new. There comes a point in life where you need to just let go of some stuff. I'm preaching already. There's some stuff you just need to let go of. Because you can't really go into your future carrying some old baggage that you've been carrying for a long time. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Tell your neighbor, I, while, while I'm sitting here, I'm getting ready for the new. You might not realize it, but I'm, I'm processing information right now, figuring out what things I need to let go of, and what things I need to get rid of, and what things I need to be released to somebody else, and what things I need to release myself of, because I'm getting ready for the new. Hallelujah. Today is the first day of December, the first day of the last month of the year, and you need to get ready to let go of some stuff. There ought not to be some things that ought to carry over with you. Not, not another week. Not another month. Not another week. Yes, right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing? Not so really amazing, but. Have you ever asked yourself the reason why the garbage man comes by every week? It is because the streets and sanitation understands that we collect and accumulate a whole lot of garbage every week that we need to get rid of. Can I suggest to you that not only does he come every week, he comes on schedule. You don't generally have to try to scratch your head and figure out when the garbage man is coming. You know when he's coming. So you can prepare the trash in advance. There are some things the devil has placed in your life. You need to tell that old joker, I'm preparing my garbage for Thursday. I'm bagging up this mess for Thursday. I'm not even going to let it stay in my house. I'm going to take it to the curb. I'm going to my garbage can sits on the side of my house. Thursday. I hope y'all know when y'all garbage pick up. Mine is Thursday. Uh -huh. I'm getting ready for the new. Hallelujah. I don't have a, I, I, I'm trying to say this, but I don't want to have an old mindset going into something I need to think differently about. I'm preparing for Tell your neighbor, get ready. We switch. Can you go back to the other Okay, that's fine. I did that. Mark chapter number 2, verse number 22. Matthew chapter number 9, verse number 14 and 17. Luke chapter number 5 all tells the story here about the scripture that I want to speak to you about. 
in preparation for the new. It says, and no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wine skins will be ruined. No! They pour new wine into new wine skins. No one pours new wine into old wine skins. Lest the wine, the new wine, bust the old wine skins, and you lose both the wine and the skin. So you pour new wine into a new wine skin. Tell your neighbor, I gotta get some new skin. passage of scripture talks to us as Jesus has now selected a disciple by the name of Matthew. He is a tax collector. He brings Matthew, a tax collector, into the fold of discipleship. And Luke suggests to us that after this calling, Matthew calls for a party to be thrown in honor of Christ. Just for the sake of that, and it is curious to me that Matthew, after being chosen of God, throws a celebration for the Lord for choosing him. A tax collector understands that he had no right to come to be chosen by the Lord because of his assignment and position naturally. But yet because he chose him, he said it's time to throw a party in your honor. Somebody here ought to just throw God a party every now and again because he chose you. Please understand, he could have chose thousands of other people better than you. But yet he chose... Was there anything about you that chose, made God decide you were worthy to be chosen of him? Probably not. So he throws this great celebration, he throws this feast, he throws a party, and he invites all the, the affluent people in. He invites people of prominence. He invites people of, of religious positionings. He brings the Pharisees in. So. And so they begin to have this wonderful conversation at the party that Matthew has thrown because he was chosen of the Lord. And so the Pharisees begin to now erupt in a question to Jesus about his disciples. And he says to him, uh, the disciples of John, they fast. But yet your disciples, they don't fast. Why is it that your disciples don't fast and the disciples of John fast? What is really going on? And so Jesus recognizes, how many of you have been talking to folk and they ask questions and you realize the question they asked was really not what was really on their mind? You might know about like that. They, you can be engaged them in a conversation and they throw out little things here, but that's not what they really want to talk about. So Jesus recognized the conversation here really is not about my disciples fasting. It's really about the doctrine and the tradition and the teachings that I'm teaching that does not align with your own traditions. Ask your neighbor, how many traditions you holding on to? So Jesus begins to give them three examples uh, to address their question. The first example, which we want to talk about, the most important one that we're dealing with is the most familiar one we talked about it. But he says the first answer to their question about why his disciples fasted others, he said, well, listen, the bridegroom is getting ready to marry. And so in the celebration of the bridegroom being with them, 
you don't expect the people to fast when there's a party being thrown. Check it number two. He says, the second issue he talks to him, he says that when you have a new garment or an old garment, and the old garment has been tattered or torn or worn, you don't go to the store and buy a new garment, cut a stitch out of the new material, and sew it into the old material, and expect that people don't recognize it doesn't fit. Thirdly, he says to them, that you don't place new wine in old wine skins. What was he saying to them? The first one is, is that, well, you know what? It's time to celebrate because the people I call, I call people who don't look like you. Please understand, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. He said that the problem is, is that you expect me to do what your custom and your tradition says, and I'm, I don't think like that. Tell somebody that Jesus is out of the box. Y'all <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. don't have to preach hard this morning. Jesus is preaching to people about life and living. He's preaching a message that is fresh and innovative. He's preaching a message about redemption. And they are so stoic and stayed. They are so sedentary in their life. They are apathetic to any things of change. They are accustomed to doing things the way they've always done them. And they never envision anything differently. They never envision more than what they currently see. Now that's a good point for somebody here today. How many of you are stuck on seeing only what you see and can't envision more for your future? They were stoic. They were stayed. They were limited and paralyzed because all they knew was what they knew. One writer said, if you're the smartest person in your group, you need another group. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's John Maxwell. If you are the if you are the brightest, most intelligent person in your group, you need another group. Now it doesn't mean that you can't stay there to help somebody else come along, but you need to get another group that can take you to a higher place than where you if you only think that the ghetto is all there is, if you think that there's only living on this level and never another level, you need another group. Let your neighbor say you need another group. <laughs> Don't get the big head because you're the most intelligent person in your group. What that really means is you're lazy. You need to go find another group. You got stuck on you being it. You know why people stay in groups like that by themselves is because it does something for their own little ego. I don't want to talk about nobody, but they're kind of small-minded, and so they stay in a place that's comfortable for them because it feeds my ego. It makes me feel I'm all right. No, 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 no. If you ever want to really grow and become who you really are scheduled to be, designed to be, you need to get in a group that's going to expand your... You need to get around somebody else who's going to challenge you to do better than what you have been doing all... No, oh, I gotta stay here in my little group here because you know what? Uh, every time anything goes wrong, they ask for me. They, 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 just, they just worship the ground I walk on because I got all the answers. Hold you. Jesus, on the other hand, Jesus had a different mentality. Jesus' mentality was as such that says, you know what? I approach things differently. I expect differently. I think different than you think. I want folk who don't look like you, act like you, think like you, walk like you. I'm looking for folk who are outside of the box. I'm looking for folk who are not already ascribed and aspired to a certain level. I'm looking for folk who you say are worthless, useless. I'm looking for a few radical people. Today the Lord sent me here to tell you as, as you're preparing for a new day, as you prepare for the new, you got to get radical first. But what happens? Only three people heard that. You got to get radical. 
you can never be a trailblazer and not be radical. You can never bring real change and not be radical. You gotta get radical in your approach, radical in your thoughts, radicals in your ways, and radical in your behavior. I know I'm messing up here, Lord Jesus. God, they got so kind. You got to get a radicalness about yourself that says, you know what? I'm a risk taker and I'm daring. Hallelujah. God shows up in his most supreme manners in the places of where we are uncomfortable. You're sitting around here saying, God, I want you to use me and do something awesome and do something great. But you're not willing to take a risk or get out of your comfort zone? What big challenge is it for God to do something when you're comfortable? to go back, Miss Brandy, to school and get the master's when you've already got the bachelor's and you got some issues going on and you got to put yourself up under that because you're saying, I want to be used. Yeah. God. Yeah. Talk to Miss Brandy because in a few weeks she's going to get her master's degree. Yeah. But you got to understand that when she talked about it this morning, she said that most people don't even understand that she cannot hear. Come on. And so she had to get out of her comfortable place. She could have very easily said, well, you know, because I can't hear, and because I'm having trouble with my vision, check it out now, having difficult with her eyes and can't hear. She's, got, she's reading my lips right now. That's the reason I adjust some things here so that I can make sure we feel a little bit of everybody. But right now, she's reading my lips. She can't hear what I'm saying. So can you imagine going to school and listening to a lecturer, a professor, and she's got to now deal with all the issues of making sure that she reads his lips correctly? Yes. And please understand that not everybody speaks clearly. Yes. And if you're a male, you speak worse than females. Most men are not as clear speaking as, I'm sorry, what you say? <laughs> so here she is putting herself out there in a place of uncomfortableness, stepping away from her comfort zone because she dare believe that she can go to school with two challenges against her and still get her degree. Somebody say in a couple of weeks. In a couple of weeks. Yeah. I, I might as well say that since I'm there. Since the angel's not here, man. Since the angel in a few months graduates with a doctorate. How in the world does a mother with two small kids? You 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 say the time and work four times. Y'all know Kennedy and Chucks, don't y'all? Say no more. And yet she works. Oftentimes she runs with my, her grandmother, my mother, to her doctor's appointments regularly. And how many of y'all kids have she babysat, taken in, commute around, and do everything else with? Uh -huh. On a regular, continuous basis, and yet she still goes to school. And what's Caleb do? And she's completing her dissertation, and in a couple of months, she'll be doctor. Angel Bruce. Evangelist Mullen has no job. Come on. And said to the Lord, I want a house without a job, without a mortgage, without a note. At the same time, she's in school, finished her master's, working her doctorate from Alabama. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. 
And some of us sit around and come up, I can't go back to school. Why not, ladies? I'm sorry. Excuse me, that was me being out here. Uh -uh, I'm sorry, forgive me. If you want to find the greatness of God, step outside of your places of comfort. You will never experience how great God is as long as you stay in your place of comfort. Your little comfort zone minimizes God. That was straight off the wire. That's not in my notes. So that's just he just sent that straight here for whoever. Let me find myself back on my notes. <laughs> Jesus comes and begins to look for people who are not afloat. He looks for folk who are not already well established off in the community. He looks for people who are willing to take a risk, who will listen to hear him rather than listen to what tradition has spoken and said to them. And Jesus said, you're the people I choose. Now, I'm glad he chose folk like that because if he, if he was choosing folk who had silver spoons in their mouths and people who, who, whose parents had money and, and then folk who had everything together, folk who had never made a mistake and messed up, if he was looking for folk who had all their, their ducks in a row, He might have found y'all. He sure wouldn't have found me. But I'm so glad he finds people who are outside of the box. If, if you are outside of that little standard, little order, you ought to give God some praise, right? what your aristocracy was, it didn't matter what your pedigree was, it didn't matter what your repute was, it didn't matter what your father was, it didn't matter what your family was, it didn't matter about any of those things. All he says, I want you to come to me, all you who are laboring and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Without money, come by and take wine and drink of a milk that flows freely. Without cost, without expense, I paid it all. All you have to do is freely come and freely receive. tell you who won't come. Folk who are still stuck on oh, this is how it has to be done. I'm so glad Victoria's living is not like a whole lot of a whole lot of a whole. I'm so glad Victoria's living is not like some. I'm so glad Victoria's living is just different than me. I'm so glad that it's just who it is. I'm so glad Victoria's living is just Victoria's living to The problem is that if we ever get the mindset that we have to have pipe organs and standard platforms and traditional music. I said to someone else, I said, I said, you come to church and we'll have videos flashing on the screen. We'll play, we'll, we'll turn on all the lights here and help show a YouTube video, show something from Lion King show, and, and then pull that up and pull everything else here and do something else. And they looked at me like, what? No, we don't just go and stand. We don't have to be in church here four hours. I'm telling you, we're not in church for four hours. <laughs> Ooh, I can't even play with that one and say, you know, let's see what we can do. I can't know it help us. They looked at me like I was crazy. You mean you, you, you don't have a whole lot of evening service, a long service? No, we don't do all that. We come to church, we have church. It's about an hour and a half, hour and 15 minutes. We come, we praise the Lord, shout, rejoice, go home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have a good time. May God is in the building answering prayer and working miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God comes looking for folk who have been poor and naked and destitute. He comes, he says, I want you to come, not because you're rich, not because you're poor, not because you're black, not because you're white, not because you're Jew, not because you're Gentile. I call you to come because I choose people sometimes just because they're different. Wow. He 
anybody any different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I four hands so the rest of y'all could be coming. I, 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 need to, I need to put a big mirror up here so y'all can see you because you're not the same. And it's okay to be different. And please, please, look, look, look. Look at the person next to you and say, don't try to make me you. <laughs> different. It's all right to be different. It is a new day and it is a new season. Hallelujah. It is a new day. It is a new yes. season. Yes. I don't care what nobody tell you. It is a new day. It is a new season. Hallelujah. There's something that's already shifted.